So the topic for this short video is going to be, I'm going to ask a question. Has anybody ever tried this for anxiety? So let's run the intro and I'll explain. Hello there, it's me again. Now, oh wow, I'm a Facebook user and I'm a member of loads of groups on Facebook for like anxiety, agoraphobia, panic attacks, and I often see posts on my timeline. And I'm not complaining about that, it's my choice to be a member of these groups. But there's a certain sort of topic that keeps popping up. And that's what this video is going to be about. And that topic being the question, have you ever tried this for anxiety? So I apologise now if you just tuned in and clicked this clickbait video because the title of it says, have you tried this? I haven't discovered some new kind of plant-based remedy that's going to cure your anxiety. So apologies. And I want to reference a post that I seen on Facebook earlier today. And I'm not going to mention any names, Nigel, but what I am going to do well, the question was basically about ashwagandha, and the exact question was, has anybody tried using ashwagandha for their anxiety? And then after that it says, um, I was using St. John's wort, but it stopped working after a week. And there's so many things with posts like that on Facebook, and it led into a discussion, a big discussion about medication and sertraline and all this kind of stuff. People were getting involved in the conversation, which actually reminds me incidentally i was talking to a friend yesterday who has anxiety and depression issues and struggles with a few things maybe maybe feeling a bit overwhelmed at the moment in their life and she went to see the doctor yesterday um she's already on citalopram and she went to the doctors and in her head it was like she was thinking and i spoke to this person and she was thinking that you know, she'd like to try and wean herself off the meds and maybe try some kind of talking therapy to try and just get this stuff off her chest, I guess. A problem shared is a problem halved and all that jazz. So let's picture the scene. You know, for people that suffer with anxiety and depression and panic attacks and agoraphobia, it's a mission in itself to get to the doctors, let alone sitting there in the waiting room with people coughing all over you and caravan magazines from the dark ages because that's what it seems to be you know we wouldn't be going to the doctors if we didn't feel that it was necessary for us to go it's not rocket science so she gets called into the doctor's office and she goes in there and she's overwhelmed and she starts to open up you know spilling her guts not literally spilling her guts but if you're going to do that the doctor's office is probably a prime location so she opened up and she told the doctor she would like to try some kind of counselling. That's what she thought would be helpful for her. And she would like to, you know, maybe try and ease off the meds because she's not really feeling the benefits from them. And this video isn't a knock on doctors. Like, we're not even supposed to be discussing medication. But, you know, doctors do do a fantastic job and they're so under pressure. Um, when it comes to physical health, like, I would see nobody else. That would be the first port of call. And there's a lot of doctors out there that do deal with mental health and that, but there's a shit ton of doctors who are just so quick to type out this prescription or whatever and just medicate, medicate. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's just what they've been told to do. It's the quickest and the easiest, maybe the most cost effective. I don't know. But my friend's doctor, after sitting and listening to my friend spill all the details and being overwhelmed and emotional, the doctor, and I quote, said... I can't offer you counselling because you're not strong enough. Goes on to then say, what we're going to do is we're going to up the milligram of citalopram. And in fact, my own GP, my own doctor, did a very similar thing to me, like 12 months ago or whenever it was. He was using a bottle of Diet Coke that was on his desk to perform this analogy of what he was going to suggest. Basically, if the bottle gets shaken up, when you open it, things start spraying everywhere. What you need to do is put a lid on it, keep it contained until things start to settle down. That was the advice that I was given. In other words, let's put a lid on, let's put some meds in, and let's calm this fizzy, bubbling explosion 
of emotion or fear or whatever it is that's happening to you. I, of course, rejected the offer of antidepressants. Because in my opinion, when you come to take that lid off, shit's just going to start spraying everywhere again. And basically, if you put a lid on that fizzy pop and it keeps getting shaken around because shit keeps getting shaken around, stress doesn't stop because you're popping pills. Stuff still gets shaken around. And when you do next come to take the lid off, it's just going to go everywhere again. And eventually you're going to end up with an empty bottle and sticky fingers. So what about we leave the lid off the pop and we try to get some advice on how to deal with the spillages? I don't even drink fizzy pop. Anyway, I'm going completely off topic here and I'm not bashing meds. Anybody that's on meds has been prescribed meds. Please do not stop taking the freaking meds. This is not me bashing meds. If they work for you, then keep taking them. They're obviously helping. They do help some people. I am not a doctor. Neither am I a trained professional. The medication topic is one for another day. You know, hopefully by somebody that's qualified and has facts on the benefits from medication. You know, hard facts and evidence. This video is targeted towards people that are looking for something to cure the anxiety. Ginseng, ashwagandha, St. John's wort, CBD oil, lavender, whatever it is. I mean, the comment at the start of this video, the St. John's wort stopped working after a week. Now they're looking to try ash ashwagandha. It's like, are you kidding me? And what are you going to say when that stops working? You're going to run out of herbal freaking remedies. Now I've been using CBD oil in my vape pen for eight months now. And guess what? It didn't fix my anxiety. I vape the shit out of this stuff. Day in, day out. And I still feel wobbly. I still feel strange sometimes. I still have episodes of anxiety. I guess sitting here making clouds didn't fix my mental and emotional issues with standing in the middle of the town centre. How come? I want my money back. I get that people are desperate. And I get that people want a quick fix. And how much easier would it be if there was a plant that we could grow that could take away our emotional response to things? But it wouldn't though, would it? Because anxiety is a response to fear. And we need that response. Because if we didn't have that response, trust me, we would all be in danger. Now there's nothing wrong with eating healthily and taking all these nutrients on board and eating these superfoods. But don't expect to be able to eat something or take something that's going to take all of your anxieties away. Take them because you want to feel healthy. Take them because they'll give you the energy maybe to get up and get out there. Maybe you'll feel less tired. Maybe give your immune system a boost. Maybe thicken your hair. Maybe increase your libido. But what they won't do is make it comfortable when you're in a crowded room if you suffer with social anxiety. And neither will they transport you to the middle of a supermarket and back home again because you can't stand shopping, that's when you're panicking. The only way to do that, is to do that. And I hate to come across as a cocky idiot. Like I ain't no know-it-all. And like I've said before, I still suffer with anxiety, I still struggle with it. And yet there's probably 9,000 different freaking plant remedies that I haven't tried yet. But I'm gonna go with my gut instinct on this, and put it down to the fact that, perhaps I just don't practice enough. I just don't practice getting comfortable enough in those situations. And the more that you do that, the more likely you are to learn that anxiety will not kill you. You're not in any real danger. And as horrible as it is at times, and in certain situations, ashwagandha ain't gonna solve that, my friend. Embrace the wobbliness. Loosen and accept. Smile and wave.